Hello and welcome to the beautiful Hudson Valley. We're here at Wildflower Farms Auberge Resort, which will be our inspiration for the landscapes that we're going to paint today. Before we start, let me just introduce myself. I'm Jamie Reynolds, a licensed artist and resident teacher here at Wildflower. Let's dive into how to use this simple watercolor kit and get to know a little bit more about watercolor itself. All you need to start is the kit, a cup of water, and then a paper towel or a rag that you don't mind getting dirty. Feel free to paint along with me or watch the whole tutorial and then go to your paints. Let's dive in. I also just wanted to show you kind of what paints we're using today. So a lot of these are Windsor and Newton along with one Daniel Smith. And there's a PDF link in the description of this video that has all of the supplies and a little breakdown of what we'll be using. So download the PDF if you wanna just get some of these examples, just for a little more inspiration. Okay, let's start by removing our paintbrush and opening our um, travel kit by pinching the butterfly wings and then opening the kit up. We're gonna work with this prototype that I have now. It will include the same thing. So two postcards with the letterpress guide. And then we have three blank postcards here. They can just be used as warm-up or they can be used as um, creating original artwork. Let's start by getting to know the colors that we have today. So color one is a lighter green that we'll use. And just take your blank page and start by just laying that color down on the top left or top right of your page. And then grab a little more water and pick up your next color, which is a darker green. Continue by washing or tapping your brush on the bottom of the cup to clean it of the previous color and pick up the next. The next is a yellow okra that I love using for the cabins and sometimes even for the cliff. I'm using enough water so that they do bleed into one another. They typically make this really lovely bloom and you can also get that effect by laying down your swatch and then picking up even more color and just dropping it into the wet area that you have. This is called charging. So I'm just moving through each color, making a few swatches just to get to know what colors I have today, ending with this really bright yellow. Now I want you to get to know your brush a little bit more. This is a size four round brush, so it comes to a point, which is really lovely because you can use it to get a very thin line or a very thick line. And you'll notice that I'm holding my brush vertically up and down. I'm giving you some suggestions, but really this is for you to play and to just reconnect with creativity. Give yourself some room, take up the entire page, really expand into this opportunity to spend some time with yourself and your thoughts. And then finally, to get to know our brush, as you see, I'm letting my, my lines kind of move into one another. That's totally fine if they touch. So this is a variegated wash, a wash of two colors and they are allowed to blend in the center or at really whatever point. This can be really wonderful, a great way to work in different colors in your sky or even in your ground and grass area. Now that we warmed up, let's move on to our postcard. So we are going to dive right into our postcard, which is a beautiful letter pressed postcard on this really nice watercolor paper. So I wanna talk you through step-by-step step how I would approach this. I'd like to start by just adding that clear wash of water on the grass. So again, I'm using the belly of my brush to just add water to this grassy part. And then I'm gonna put in maybe some yellow first before I go to my green. I'm just gonna start by dropping in a little bit of yellow in different places on the grass just to have some variation. Variation is great. Contrast is great in your watercolors. Now I'll add some green as our grass is typically green. 
So maybe you're at home after your visit to Wildflower and you are just kind of dreaming about being back there, trying to remember how you saw the landscape. You don't have to get your photos out. Give yourself the artistic license to really make it however you want it to be. So I'm gonna add in some of those darker greens, but knowing that this is the front of our uh, painting, so we don't wanna make it too dark. If at any point you feel like you made something too dark and you wanna lift it up, you can dry off your brush. This is great for kind of erasing watercolor. And then take your dry brush over the area that you want to lift. So in watercolor, there's unfortunately no white, so we're not painting white over anything, over any mistakes, but there are little tips that you can do. So now I'm going to add my clear water to my sky, daydreaming about what sky I'd like to see above these cabins. So you might look to the side and notice how your paper is kind of glistening where you put that wash of water. That's a good thing. We want our paper to kind of glisten in the sun or the light that we have. And today the day is kind of cloudy. So I'll add in some blue, leaving some white areas for our clouds. Some areas are darker than others. Another way to add in clouds is to take your paper towel or your, your rag and just kind of dab onto your postcard and lift your color off, creating the idea of clouds. So I think I'm gonna move on to our greens behind our cabin. So I'm going to just outline the cabin with green because I want there to be a lot of foliage, a lot of trees behind each cabin. So this doesn't have to look like trees just yet, but I wanna make kind of like a band of green behind the cabins. And once I have that band of green, I'm just going to put in a little bit of this ochre color for the, for the ridge, for the cliff but I just wanna give this some color before we go into our details. So as we wait for our foundational layer to dry, it's a great moment just to pause, great moment to reflect and to take a really deep breath in and a full breath out. Now that my foundation is dry, I wanna go back in and now just put in these details. So I'm just doing some dashy lines for my grass. So really little, not, not too much thought for this, just kind of going around, making little tiny dashes, just giving the grass some texture. Okay, let's focus on the cabins. I'm gonna use this number three color to just do a very light wash. So we're talking 80% water and 20% pigment here. But even still, we don't need to put that much paint and that much pigment on it. I'm noticing that there's some trees at the top of the ridge. So I'm just going to do some little dashy marks, very technical term. Just do kind of like small little band of green right at the top of the cliff. But the most important thing to do is to turn it around and you can use any color to draw a vertical line on the kind of closer to the right side, three horizontal lines. So this is where your stamp will go. And you'll write your address here to wherever you want your postcard to be delivered. If you are using your landscape as a postcard, take some time to think about who you want to send this to. That could be a loved one that you're thinking about while you're here, or maybe just yourself if you wanna capture the feeling of being here at Wildflower 
and the spaciousness that it brings. If you'd like some more inspiration on what to put on the other blank sheets that you have in your watercolor kit, check out the description below this video or subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for painting with me. I hope to see you in this beautiful landscape soon. Until then, be well.